Kal Halal Yom La Yahweh Bahasham Shal Yahweh Shai, which means all praise to the Most High in the name of His Son. The Most High's name is Yahweh, which is ancient Paleo Hebrew, what the world ignorantly call him Jah or Jehovah. That's his only name. The Son's name is Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus or Yeshua, and so forth. Double honors the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and salutations elect that pushing the truth in the four corners and highways and byways for the children of Israel, the so called Negroes, Latinos, Hispanics, Native Americans, Amerindians are the children of Israel. Also, the confusion of faces that looks like the so called white race, the so called Chinese, and so forth, but have the, the spirit of an Israelite and believe and trust in this, in this word. Now, there's a lot of negative energy being pushed out, so to speak. These, uh, these world leaders are pushing out these vibrations or these uh, rituals in plain sight. All right? And right here in this land here, they're paying homage to, to, to the dead and to gods unknown, false gods. And trying to you know paint a good picture, but we the men of the Lord... Are seeing all the all the wickedness that's going on. I just got a short clip of, of what transpired. All right, this is uh, President Granger, um, who orchestrated this whole um, event. Yesterday, the annual Remembrance Day was observed at the War Memorial just outside of the Bank of Guyana on Main Street. In a brief statement, the head of state, himself a former military person, reflected on the effects of. You see, he's bowing to this this image, this idol, all right? They refer to it as a cenotaph, but I'm going to explain what exactly this is. True spirit, how about Shemi, how Those who fought and those who died. We remember the Guyanese men and women who struggled for national independence and who have given their lives in the service of our nation. We thank those Guyanese who continue to defend our territory and our patrimony. President David Granger said that as a country, our resolve is strengthened by the heroes' examples and that we are encouraged as a nation. Mr. Granger noted that because of their example, our efforts to keep Guyana a safe zone will remain both now and in the future. We are encouraged by their example to strengthen our resolve to preserve the Caribbean as a zone of peace and safety now and to generations to come. Several of the ambassadors and diplomats of foreign nations joined in the laying of wreaths at the... Of course, they must have some high-level warlocks up in this place, you know? Let's hear, let's hear uh, their positions, you know, in this uh, Babylonian system. ...war memorial. Some of the wreaths were laid by representatives of the Red Cross, the Guyana Legion of Retired GDF Personnel, the United Nations, and the Boy Scouts. Prayers were said by religious leaders of the Hindu, Muslim, and Christian faiths. We gather in your presence this morning to adore and to worship you on this Remembrance Day. Man, man what upset me the most? Look, look, look at his cheek. Look at his cheek. You know, these sellouts, bro. These dudes that just want to shine. You know, the own glory and think they're actually doing something beneficial to, to, to the body of the Most High, the real, the real church, the real Israelites. But you know, the Most High blinded them according to um, Isaiah 66 and um, chapter 6 as well. Remember today the cost of it all, the great sacrifice for freedom. We thank you for the brave who have fought and continues to fight so courageously for our nation. Prime Minister Moses Nagumutu and other government officials were also in attendance at the ceremony. All the heads of the military services were present and outfitted in their ceremonial regalia. 
The Remembrance Day occasion marks the event of World Wars I and II, wars which were waged in Egypt, France, Belgium, and East Africa. At the conclusion of his statement, President Granger said that Guyana as a nation rededicates itself to the quest for peace and happiness as a nation. We rededicate ourselves to the quest for peace for the nation. For Channel 2 Headline News, I am Wendell J. Peace for the nation, my ass. Because first thing first, World War III is coming and this guy knows it. That's why he's putting out his vibration. He's giving honors and, and, and you know, right? Another thing I want to highlight in this video is that you see where this where are all these trees and stuff like that this is what the script is referred to as a grove right and right in the center of that area is a pagan image an idol that they're bowing to all right so let's get to the historical facts and then we'll get to scriptures this is the uh the thing he was bowing to the cenotaph all right that's what they call it see how, see how it's structured it right? come in different shapes in different countries but this is really what it is an obelisk all right or obelisk an obelisk, you know, from Greek, ob obeliskos, diminutive, spit nail pointed pillar is tall, four sided, narrow, tapering monument which ends in a pyramid like shape or pyramidion at the top. These are originally called tekhenu by their builders, the ancient Egyptians, the Greeks. Who also saw Slakia? The Greeks who saw them use them use the Greek term obeliskos to describe them, and the word and this word passed into Latin and ultimately English. Ancient obelisks are monolithic. That is, they consist of a single stone. Most modern obelisks are made from several stones. Some like the Washington Monument, our buildings, all right? So let's go down a little more, get a little more facts on this here. All right, Egyptian. I'm gonna show you ancient obelisk in different um, mythologies, civilizations or whatever. Obelisks are prominent in architecture in ancient Egypt, of ancient Egyptians who placed them in pairs at the entrances of temples. The word obelisk used in the English today is of Greek rather than Egyptian origin because of Herodotus the Greek traveler was one of the first classical writers to describe the objects a number of in ancient Egyptian obelisks are known to have survived plus the unfinished obelisk found partly hewn from its quarry at Aswan these obelisks are now dispersed around the world fewer than half of them remain in Egypt because of pursuing to revelations this is called this 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 kingdom this civilization this system right now is is called uh, spiritually sodom and egypt the earliest temple obelisk still in its original position is a 68 foot 100 100 metric ton red granite obelisk of senus senusrit the first of the seventh dynasty at the al mataria in modern Helopolis, Heliopis, or however you pronounce that. The obelisk symbolized the sun god, Ra, and during the brief reformation of Akhenaten, was said to be petrified, be a petrified ray of Aten, the sun disk. It was also thought that the god existed within the structure. You see, a petrified ray. Petrified means like to turn to stone. But they say that the obelisk symbolizes the, the god of Ra. So let's go quick to uh, God of Ra real quick. Let's bring up something. Uh, in later Egyptian dynastic times, Ra merged with the gods Horus and Ra Haraki or whatever. Ra was Ra who is Horus of the of two horizons. He was believed to rule part in all parts of the created world the sky and the, the earth and on the world on the world pursuing to him giving homage to the dead all right and what does and what does um these obelisks symbolize this is a god all 
right? Assyria, Azumite. These things are set up all over the world, right? Ancient Rome, different areas that they left, that they uh, did. Byzantine, pre-Columbian, 17th century. So just gonna scroll through some of these. There's one of the church, you know? Yeah, United Kingdom. All over the place, you know? Twentieth century. You know, these are just the popular documented one. This is a twenty-first century. There's an erection experiment. Someone want to lift up a um, set up a twenty-five ton obelisk, but failed to do so. All right, so we're gonna to go to this article here. Phallic architecture. Phallic architecture consciously or unconsciously creates a symbolic. Uh, representation of phallus phallus what's phallus right a phallus is, is a pen is a penis especially when erect in erect an object that resembles a penis or mimetic image of an erect penis any object symbolically or more pre precisely ironically resembles a penis may also refer to as a phallus however some objects more often refer to it as being phallic all right that's what an obelisk is it's a phallic symbol of, of and we'll proceed here buildings intentionally and unintentionally resembling a human penis are a source of amusement to locals there's perversion you know an idolatry locals and tourists and various places around the world deliberate phallic imagery is found in ancient cultures and in links to ancient cultures found tradi in traditional artifacts. Ancient Greeks and Romans celebrated phallic festivals and built a shrine with erect phallus to honor Hermes, the messenger of gods. So they're trying to send a message to these, <laughs> these false gods. Those figures may be related to Egyptian deity Min. Min, let's see who's Min. Min is an ancient Egyptian god whose cult originated in pre-dynastic period. He was presented in many different forms, but most often represented a male form, male form shown with an erect penis, which he holds in his left hand, an upheld right arm holding a flag, who depicted holding a, an erect phallus. Figures of women with phallus, you know, which is um, like hermaphrodite or trans, transgender and all that nonsense and wickedness figures of women with a phallus for a head have been found across greek and yugoslavia phallic symbolism was prevalent in the architecture tradition of ancient babylon the romans who were deeply superstitious all also often used phallic imagery in their architecture and domestic items the ancient cultures of many parts of of far east including indonesia and india such as lingam korea japan use phallus as a symbol of fertility in motifs in their temples and in other areas areas of everyday life so i was trying to send a message to the underworld to bring back these spirits uh, fertilize the, the 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 intentions of war to going to world war three all in a nutshell all of it is just wickedness basically all right so as i was saying earlier uh, those trees represent a grove all right a grove a small wood or a group of trees now let's go to the scriptures real quick e ezekiel 22 and 1 moreover the word of yahweh came unto me saying now thou son of man will thou judge will thou judge the bloody city Yea, thou shalt shew her all her abomina abominations. Now that Jay that was praying, so-called Christian, supposed to be reading this precept. You know, but he take a nice little bag, take a little spunny, spenny, you, you know, you hear line up and buy the stupid ass shawl or whatever you ask you call it. And, and you know, got on his shades and looking at all thing and reading from some pamphlet praying. When you're supposed to be praying in, in private, you know then say thou thus saith Yahweh power the city sheddeth blood in the midst of it 
that her time may come and make idols against herself, against herself to defile herself. All right, they're shedding blood. They're talking about they're giving praise to men that die for, for, for stupidness. You know, they didn't die for righteousness. They didn't die for for um thing. The world war one world the world the first world war and the second world war was funded by the Illuminati. Funded by Bilderbergers, Rockefellers, Duponts. You know those banking families. Verse 4, thou art become guilty in thy blood, thou hast shed blood, and hast defiled thyself in idols which thou hast made. Thou hast caused thy days to draw near, and art come even unto thy years. World War III stirring up. That's why, um, you know, things are speeding up. Therefore have I made thee a reproach unto the heathen and a mocking to all countries. This is just a mocking, all right? They're just using Jake as a... um. As a means of you know force or a means of, of numbers all right and goes on to say because the Prince of Israel every one were in thee to their power to shed blood so President Granger he's in power and he he basically put now the put out the the message that we can defend you know we can try to make peace if we got killed whoever we got killed and so forth but it's all falling into the will of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. All this must be prophesied, right? Verse 9. Let's get to the point. In thee are men that carry tales to shed blood. He's carrying the tale of the old world, world war in order to stir up more uh, vibration. So these youngsters, these young men and women, apparently, yeah, they got women there trying to go to war and so forth. In thee that they may eat up mountains, talking about like governments. In the midst of thee, they commit lewdness. Verse 12. In thee, they have given gifts. Slake. They have taken gifts to shed blood. Thou hast taken usury and increased. The United Nations was there. You best believe that they can take a, a, little, a, little, a little spenny, as we say over here. You know? To recruit men for, for the uh, next world war. Thou hast greedily gained of thy neighbors by extortion and hast forgotten me, saith Yahweh, power. All right. Behold, therefore, I have smitten mine hand at thy dishonest gain, which thou hast made, and at thy blood, which thou ha hath been in the midst of thee. Uh, 14. Can thine heart endure or can thine hands be strong in the days that I shall deal with thee? You think. They think that they can actually challenge Yahweh Bahasham Yahushai, the omnipotent ruler, you know, the Ah and the Tha. You can't challenge your creator. I, Yahweh, have spoken it and I will do it. The most I will destroy them. I will scatter thee among the heathen and disperse thee in countries. I will consume thy filthiness out of thee. This is what Yahweh Bahasham Yahushai is going to do. All right? Verse 16. And thou shalt take thine inheritance in thyself. In the sight of the heathen, and thou shalt know that I am Yahweh was the inheritance. Let's go quick to that scripture there. Let's go into that. Um, all right, that's the Hebrew halal. And let's see what's the inheritance because that's it's not going to be a pretty inheritance if Yahweh Hashem Yahushai said it for you, the wickedness. All right, you see, profane, defile, polluted, desecrate, begin. Profane oneself, defile, pollute oneself, ritually, sexually. That's what they've done. That's what they inherited by, by keeping these rituals and deceiving the people, all right? Verse 25. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst of thee, like a roaring lion ravening the prey. The, the prophet is a roaring lion ravening the prey. He's trying to pray for the dead in remembrance. You got to remember who you are, brother. You're a prince, but you know, you y'all behaving like, like, you know, these other nations, they have devoured souls. They have taken treasures of precious things. They have made many widows in the midst of thee. Like, for example, you know, a brother might come to this past and say, yeah, I want to join the army and so forth. He's like, yeah, you're doing a good thing to defend your nation, defend your country, Guyana. You're not from this land. We're from the land Israel. All right. Her priests have violated my law. So many laws have they violated out there. And have profaned my holy things. 
they have put no difference between holy and profane neither have they shewed difference between unclean and unclean he's praying there with hindus and muslims that is totally contradiction what agreement hath darkness with light and light with darkness you know and have hid their eyes from my sabbaths and profaned and i am profaned among them they're disrespecting Yahweh Hashem Yahushai and he's going to mess them up. Seriously. All right? Verse 27. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves, ravening the prey to shed blood, to destroy souls, to get dishonest gain. That's what they're doing. They're trying to get dishonest gain. They, they, they're going to put, put these men up to, to be sheep for the slaughter. Not even righteous sheep. You know? More like goats for the slaughter. Because when Yahweh Shai bust through them clouds on the chariots and burn them with spiritual flight fire and with the nuclear missiles, then they can really know who, who got power in this place. You know? Psalms 1 10 and 3. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Alright? 28. Her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar, seeing vanity, divining lies. Unto them saying, Thus saith Yahweh, when Yahweh hath not spoken. They're trying to anoint these men in these positions, and Yahweh hath not hath not spoken these words, haven't given him him um, authority to, to go to this 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 witchcraft event. Alright, so let's go into this um untempered martyr and see what, what it's really talking about. Alright, a foolish, insipid tasteless unseasoned whitewashed that's what they're doing meaning uncertain all right that's what these wicked ass jigs are doing all right jose 8 and 4 they have set up kings but not by me they have made princes and i knew it not of their silver and their gold have they made them idols that that they may be cut off they're making idols of wood and stone and silver and all these nonsense Giving praises to Ra and Hermes and all these other gods. You know, some perverse shit. This is Isaiah 6 to 5 and 2. I spread out my hands all day unto a rebellious people which walketh in a way that is not good after their own thoughts. They all think that this shit is right. And some of them willingly ignorant. Majority of them willingly ignorant. Slack you. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face. That sacrifice in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick. That's what they're doing. Burning incense upon altars of brick. That rit what they put in there is, is a, um, another symbol, you know, representing a womb. Alright? Which remain which remain among graves and lodged in monuments, which eat eat swine's flesh and broth abominable things. In their vessels, they're probably gonna eat some some stinking ass Chinese food up the road, not too far from the same location. You know, Jiao Ba Shem Yao Shai is gonna gonna deal with this place, yo. Real thing. Isaiah two and seven. Their land is also full of gold. Neither is there any end of their treasures. Their land is full of horses. Neither is there any end of their chariots. Meaning that the bank again is right there, and they're building up armies. They're building up an army for this world, world, this new world order. The land is full of idols. They worship the work of hands that which, that which their own fingers have made. The mean men boweth down and the great men humbleth themselves. Therefore, forgive them now. We don't forgive them, them, them reprobates. We don't forgive them. Great men like Granger, these men in position. This would mean like great men. Humble themselves before these idols, these inanimate objects, these things that have no meaning, no life, nothing. All right. Micah 5 and 13. Thy graven images also will I cut off, and thy standing images in the midst of thee, thou shalt no more worship the, the work of thine hands. I will pluck down thy groves in the midst of thee, so will I destroy thy cities. All right, the groves. This is a grove. Look at this fucking Christmas shit that they got going on there, yo. Well, most I gonna burn this place just like this here, and I will execute vengeance in the anger 
and a fury upon the heathen such as such as they have not heard, saith Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai. Isaiah 30 and 20. Woe to the rebellious children, saith Yahweh, that take counsel but not of me, that cover with the covering but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. They're going down to, to spiritual Egypt, claiming that they're fighting literal Egypt in that um, first and second war, whichever war. All right? They, they're looking for a covering, but it's not of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai spirit. That's why they're praying to the fucking Hindus and the Muslims like 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 spirit like whores that walk and go down to Egypt and and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen up themselves to strength in the strength of Pharaoh to trust in the shadow of Egypt. That's what they that's what they trust in America. They trust in America because America is all this shit and most is gonna destroy this place, yo. Jeremiah 13 and 21. What shall thou say when he shall punish thee for thou for thou hast taught them to be captains and as chief over thee? So these they teaching these other nations to rule over them. But they're blind to think that they're gonna elevate themselves. Shall not shall not sorrows take thee as a woman in travail? If thou say in thine heart, Wherefore come these things upon me? Oh they're gonna they can see. Alright? We can go to the next precept for so expound on this. Uh, wherefore come these things upon me for the greatness of thine iniquity are thy skirts discovered and thy heels are made bare. Mosai is going to strip them all right, of the wickedness with, with spiritual fire and nuclear fire as well. Can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? They're trying to be something they're not. Then may ye also do good. Just as a, a leper can change his spot, we were made to do good. That are accustomed to do evil. They're trying to make evil a normal thing. But we were we were made to do good. Us, the so-called Negroes, black um blacks, all right, Native Americans, Amerindians, Hispanics, Latinos, confusion of faces, we are made to do good. This is what Yahweh Hashem Yahushai did. Therefore I will scatter them as a stubble that passeth away as the wind in the wilderness. This is thy lot, the portion of thy measures from me, saith Yahweh, because thou hast forgotten me and trusted in falsehood. That's what they trusted in. Falsehood. Fucking stones and, and things that have no life. All right, Isaiah 2 and 18. And the idols shall be utterly abolished. They have... And they shall go into the holes of the rocks, into the caves of the earth, for the fear of Yahweh and for the glory of his majesty, which he ariseth and shaketh shake terribly the earth. Alright? This is what Yahweh Hashem Yahushai is gonna do. You're gonna flee into these bunkers when shit hit the fan. In that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold that he made, each one for himself to worship. To the moles and to the bats, they're gonna throw away all that shit, they're gonna forget the cenotaph and everything. And realize that they do a set of nonsense. Waste their efforts and energies on wickedness. To go into the clefts of rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks for fear of Yahweh and for the glory of his majesty. When he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. Cease ye from man whose breath is in his nostril, for wherein is he? To be accounted of all right stop worshiping yourself and worshiping these inanimate thing and worshiping man you know i hope that this lesson was very fine you know again all praises to yahweh bahasham yahweh shai double honest be apostles and elders of great millstone and salutations peace and mercy to the hopeful elect akwath akyam and the children you know shalom brakta